So, starting to disassemble the Super Duty chassis. What I'm gonna do first is undo that nut, undo this nut, which holds these um, A arms or control arms for the front Dana 60 axle. And then we'll probably end up cutting these U bolts off because I don't think the impact will take them off. But first, let's just see if this impact will take these nuts off. Well, after holding the other end, it came right off. Now, here is the steering gearbox that I plan on using. So we can see here's how it's mounted. We have three bolts, and then we'll have to undo uh, the bolt on, what is that, the tie rod? Something like that. Um, so yeah, these three bolts right here, let's see if it'll do it. I think that's on there pretty good. Extension. Well, this was my progress last night. I removed both front and rear differential from the chassis. I removed the Dana 44 from my truck. And this is what we're left with. Now, here's the old leaf springs off of the Dana 44. Here's the old differential. I'm just going to drag it outside in the snow for right now. But yeah, here's the closed knuckle Dana 44. We can see how puny that looks compared to this monster. So this is a Dana 60, I believe, from a 2006 Ford F-250 Super Duty. That is a great upgrade over this differential. Now, if we come back here, this is a Sterling 10 and a half. Here's the parking brake cables. I should be able to make it work. Um, yeah, Sterling 10 and a half. Obviously, I'm gonna not use those shocks. I'm going to, I have to replace a couple brake lines. I think I can use the brake lines that I already have for that rear axle because they simply go to this rubber line for the caliper. So all I have to do is just cut off this axle mount here cut off this axle mount here, and then get that up underneath the truck, center it up, measure multiple times, and weld it in. So, yeah, here's the disc brakes. That'll be a great upgrade. And looking at it, the drive shaft might also be the same length, so I'm gonna see if that is the same length, maybe I can just get a different yoke on the transfer case to accept this U-joint to where I can have a much stronger drive shaft. Now over here, all we should have to do to this one is just a conversion U-joint. Uh, that's not ideal, but that's gonna be good enough for me. I don't plan on having the truck in four wheel drive on the tar, so it shouldn't break any U-joints. I would like to get this steering gearbox separated off of here um, today. And what else I plan on doing today? I plan on getting this steering gearbox taken out. I will drain my radiator and I will remove my radiator. And I need, to, this is a plate, 316th plate that I welded in. I'm gonna have to cut it just past these bolts on the right and down and then grind off all the welds that I did. I have to remove this old brake line mount. I have to remove the shock mounts and the shocks. And let's see, what else do I have to remove before I can start doing some cutting and welding? 
the shock mount, that little mount there, the bump stops have to be removed. This little stitch thing right here needs to be ground flat. I have to remove the bolts for the motor mounts, those two right there. And then over here, you can see these rivets. Um, I need to cut them flat and then somehow punch them out because that is where the bracketry will mount. And then once I get this differential in place, get that put on, I'll tighten down, I'll do the rear. Yeah, here's all the these springs. Bushings look to still be in good shape, surprising. But so for that, that's about all I have to do there. I made a lot of progress yesterday. Like I said, this chassis uh, had the both sets of axles underneath it yesterday when I got home. I went ahead and removed them, and then I just hooked the chain to it and drug it forward out here in the snow out of my way. So if I need more parts from it, it's right here. So yeah. Hopefully next time I get back on the video, I'll have those things removed that I was talking about. And we can see how all that looks and what we need to do there. Well, the steering gearbox is out. Here's where it had sat. Um, as we can see, I still have to cut somewhere in here to remove this plate a little bit for my mount. And then I got both of the shock mounts off with the shocks. I still need to cut off that little rivet right there on that bracket. Remove these two bolts right now. What I think I'm gonna work on, I think I'm gonna start draining the radiator and removing the bolts for the radiator, removing the radiator hoses. Uh, I think I might even remove that power steering pulley belt to give me a little bit more room for when I'm cutting. Now, this is my negative cable, the black cable on the left that we can see. It looks like I can just simply unbolt it from the battery and just run it up and underneath somewhere out of my way so I won't have to unbolt it from the motor. That's fine. It's a little bit easier. And let's see. Yeah, that's that. Now let's go take a look at the steering gearbox. Now here is the steering gearbox. This gearbox has been rebuilt. As we saw from the previous videos, it was working perfectly and flawlessly. Um, it's just a little dirty because I've driven the truck like 8,000 miles with it. Yeah, that's a great unit for something else. Um, I don't know if I'll be super duty swapping my 1968 Ford. I probably will. I might just have to do a super duty swap with that, so I might not even use that later. Now with this Dana 44, I'm thinking I might take off the steering tie rod and the steering arm because I could probably sell those and then maybe put this uh, 44 up for sale for 200 bucks or something. I think it just needs a ring gear. I haven't taken the cover off, I'm not going to. Or... Hey, it blew a U-joint. Thinking it blew that right U-joint, I don't know. It's kinda where it sounds like that little sound is coming from. That's fine. But yeah, if it just blew a U joint, that's an easy fix. Let's see, I still need to remove the bump stop over here. And basically, over here, this will be the easiest mount to put on. I don't have to do any cutting. I only have, I mean, I have to cut off this little rivet on that brake line mount, and that's it. And then just grind everything clean so it seal or it sits up there nicely. I'm gonna remove that mount right there. And then I just have to cut a couple rivets and pound those out. Um, as we can see from my previous cold start videos, there's no way this thing has been plugged in. I don't even have the cord for the block heater. Um, but yeah, making progress. It's coming right along. Can't wait to get this thing running and driving again with these axles. Really looking forward to seeing what it'll do. Well, we've got the radiator draining slowly. 
Here's how the fluid looks after about 8,500 miles. Um, we have the radiator unbolted. We have the top hose off. All four bolts are out of it. It's just kind of pinned in here at an angle. And all I need to do now is just remove that lower hose completely and it should just lift right out. I've already cut the wires for my fans because I'm gonna rewire them anyways. Um, here's just a little look of how the mess has progressed. We have every tool out, complete mess. But other than that, it's progress. One step closer to installing this. Now, I've talked about the brackets a little bit. Let's go take a look at them. So here is one of the brackets that goes on the bottom of the frame. It'll go, it'll mount just like this. Then those rivets that I have to punch out are, are on the frame. So there's like three rivets that I need to punch out. I think I need to drill one hole or it's either a factory hole, I'm not too sure. But that's how that goes. Uh, there's a few more brackets. They're still covered in this. Uh, they're nice and powder coated. They look great, um, which they should, you know, expensive kit. We want everything to be perfect. So basically my truck will have axles from a 2006, a motor and transmission from a 1991, a turbo kit from an 80 something, um, Brand new interior, a seat from a late 80s truck, a 2020 winch bumper. And the only thing that's gonna be a stock high boy on this truck is the frame and transfer case. But the transfer case I've already had rebuilt. The frame, well, I've done a lot of modifications to it. Um, there are a few more things I want to do. I wanna add a stabilizing bar underneath the oil pan going that way, you know, that way, to help stabilize it since I had to notch the cross member quite a bit and I have to notch it a lot more for this uh, Super Duty gearbox. But as far as what I want to do to this axle and the rear axle, well, I want to do absolutely nothing to them other than just change the fluid. If I find I'm having issues with bushings, I'll replace the bushings. Um, obviously bleed the brakes, but I don't plan on changing any brake lines besides those metal ones on that rear axle because I broke one of them. Um, so yes, if I can get away with doing nothing to the axles besides changing the gear oil because they sat outside for like the seven months that I've owned them and however long they, they were outside before without a bed over them covering them up, um, there might be some water or something in them and I you know, don't want to ruin it but I'll first get it mounted up underneath the truck, then change the gear oil. And yeah, just making progress. Just spend a lot of time looking for tools that I know I had. Um, they're somewhere in here. So yeah, just letting that, that radiator drain, then we'll remove it and then start doing some cutting favorite thing. I actually dislike all the cutting from all the shavings and all that stuff. And yeah. So, keep you updated. Well, that worked pretty well. We just kind of pried that hose off with a screwdriver and the radiator tipped over like that. And I don't know, half a gallon only went on the floor. That's not too bad, but most of it went into the funnel and into the cans. So that's good. All right. Finally got this thing cut out. It probably took me close to six hours just to cut this piece of frame out. So we can see here's what I modified before when I built the truck. Uh, I added this plate. I had notched this piece of cross member. Well, this, this little plate here, this little plate there. And then here we can get a good look at my welds. They look to be pretty good. I mean, it, that thing was holding in there tight. It took a lot to get this thing off. This was a plate that ran from over here all the way to the frame. I ended up just slicing through it with a sawzall. I believe this is a factory piece right here. And then let's go 
to take a look underneath the truck to see what I've been fighting for like the past day. So it looks rough right now, but we've still got a lot to do. I'm going to try to beat these spacers off. I already beat two of them off. And then I need to do some grinding, do some fine tuning, some more measurements, and then we're ready to start welding in the new piece. Now, my next step after I break those two spacers off will be to come over here on both sides of the truck and cut off rivets. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to put like an X in them and then maybe take an air hammer and punch them out. Now if we go over to the passenger side, I've already tried doing that when I rebuilt the truck, but I did not have any luck getting the rivets out. Right here. Did I get one of them out? I may have got one of them out. Um, but yeah, I've already, no, I did not get any of them out. There's one, two, three. Um, so I'll do a little bit more grinding and then maybe see if the air hammer can take them out. Uh, all right. So that's progress. 